Our understanding of our own history comes from the people who lived before us. Detailed notes, works of literature, even great pieces of art give us some insight into how our ancestors lived. But what happens when there are places mentioned in multiple historic texts that modern day humans can't locate? But before we go any further, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button and give us a like. I am in the process of opening up a backup channel on BitChute for Esoteric Atlanta. Also, if you want to help support the channel, there is a link to our Patreon page down below. And I also encourage you to check out one of our producers, Tiffany's businesses that are listed down below as well. She is a Reiki master as well as helps people with their spiritual discipline. So if that's something you're interested in, if you're local to the area, you can always schedule a one-on-one -on -one meeting with Tiffany. Otherwise, if you would like to work with Tiffany, make sure you contact her and she can work something out with you guys on Zoom. All right, let's get started. Welcome to Esoteric Atlanta. My name is Bryce and today we're going to be talking about the mysterious Bavarina Castle. In 29 AD, a priest named Henry, Henry of Latvia, started chronicling what would become known as the Crusades of Livonia. Livonia is an historic region that's located up near the Baltic Sea. It encompasses Estonia as well as northern Latvia. Now, prior to this historical crusade, this area was known as a great outpost. However, it was a very pagan outpost, as most of that area was. From many accounts that I read, it seemed that this was really pop in place. We could probably say it was almost like our modern day mall. It seems that people from all over Northern Europe, the West Side and the East Side would meet in this area to do their trades, to buy and to sell and to celebrate within their own pagan faith. However, starting in 1180, Germanic knights as well as Scandinavian knights decided to come into the area quite forcefully and proclaim it for Christendom that had been spreading all over the Western world. Obviously, most people think of the Crusades as wars that happened in the Holy Land. However, this was happening in what was then Livonia. Now, the whole of the Crusades in Livonia lasted from 1180 to 1227. And Henry, our fearless priest from Latvia, chronicled everything from his own first-hand experience. And in fact, his chronicles of this time are the oldest known documentation from this particular area. So obviously, the chronicles of Henry are super important for us to understand what happened here. Many times in these chronicles, Henry speaks of this castle. He calls it the Bavarina Castle, which would be located in the Bavarina area. However, today we can't find this castle. Now there is one incident in the Chronicles of Henry that makes us believe we, we might know where this castle was potentially located, even though we can't, we can't find it. It happened in 1208, and this group of Estonians actually came in and attacked the castle. When they went to retreat from the castle that night, they retreated by a lake in the area. Now, unfortunately for these Estonians, that night they were attacked by the famous Knights Templar that got their fame from the Crusades anyway. And it seems the Knights Templar chased the Estonians out of the area. Now there's a lot of speculation around 
the Knights Templar and what they really were doing in, in this whole banking business, but I'll leave that to other channels to get into because many people talk about the Knights Templar. We do know that, that again, this was heavily chronicled by Henry and he talks about the lakes and the rivers and the Tricotta Mound, which is an area here that you can still visit today. It's just it's a mound in Latvia. So it's almost like Henry's given us a pinpointed direction, a pinpointed place, a GPS, so to speak, from that time period of where this particular Bavarina castle was located. But, but there's no historical remains. We can't find anything to prove that this was indeed a functioning and important castle, important enough to be invaded and, and protected by the Knights Templar. Many people believe that it might be possible that underneath the mound, the Tricotta Mound, we might find some remains of the castle. Although I'm, I'm, ever since I did my whole deep dive into giants, I'm pretty suspicious of mounds, so I don't think I would go digging in that mound anytime soon. People also speculate that this castle has been lost amongst all the castles from the area. You see, there were so many castles in this particular area. As I said, this was an outpost. This was like, this was like the Raven spot. It was like the New York City of, of that area for that time. Some people have even gotten frustrated enough to, to suspect that maybe this isn't the right location. Like maybe Henry got it wrong. Maybe this castle is somewhere else and it's just being confused with with another castle, another landmark, and, and maybe Henry just, just made a mistake in his chronicles. And others believe that Bavarina Castle probably exists, but in another parallel universe. Is it possible that there was a castle that had a, a bleed through into our world from that time period and then bled out again later? Is that, is that possible? You see, we, we know that Henry historically was a part of, of our universe. And we, we understand the Knights Templar, of, of course, they were a part of our reality. We also know Estonians, they were a part of our world. But what about this castle? Did it just slip in and out before we even understood what a multiverse possibly was? All we know is that there are historical records of this particular castle, but yet we can't find it. So what do you think? Do you think that it's something as simple as Henry got the location wrong and we've confused Bavarina Castle with another castle? Do you think that maybe it didn't exist to begin with or, or we've just lost the ruins? Or do you think that this is yet another example of a parallel universe? Let me know in the comments below. Again, thank you so much guys for all of your support. If you would like to purchase our opening song, the full song, there is also a link down below to Josh's page where you can purchase the song from him. It's his song. Um, again, thank you to Josh McKay for doing our music and to Todd Roderick for helping me produce this episode. If you would like to check out Todd's band, The Flying Mystics, you can check them out in the description box too. All right, guys, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.